recording or not? Ah, look at this community. Huh? Terus on the spot repair. Ah, the movies, movies. Tak ada tool pun boleh ah. Ah, tak ada tool. This is uh, <laughs> tech support on demand. Tak ada pokok eh. Hot sun. The E36 live. This is the clutch fan. Not sure we hit may have hit something. Then it broke. Then radiator died in the process. But very luckily nothing else uh, got damaged. Sometimes hitting all this thermostat or the, the pulley or the belts, they can they can they can really cut. Uh, radiator here, here, this one is the one leaking. Hi guys, I have my E36 here today, and look at this beautiful box. Huh? It says Saar Genuine Hearts. Okay, I think for some of you, you may uh, be very familiar with this brand. This is an electric fan, and today the plan is to install an electric fan for my E36 well um, it was just last week where there was a Gymkhana event and uh, my fan clutch exploded the radiator got damaged I and and the next day I've got to go to Sepang track day so in urgency of time I just replace a new radiator uh, remove the fan clutch so I'm only running the auxiliary fan that's all um, and I went to Sepang just like that uh, but in the end I also feel it will be more uh, uh, safer if I run with an additional radiator cooling fan so this is the fan it is a 16 inch there's three colors I choose black because it looks most OEM this is the slim type so they have two types of fan one has a thicker motor for higher speed i don't think i need that i will just uh, use the slim version so today um, the mission is to have this mounted on the radiator so i've got a broken radiator here and then i'm gonna make some bracket so that it will fit and i will still use this uh, stock fan shroud uh, so that it can hold my radiator expansion tank, uh, coolant expansion tank. Sat do provide this uh, cable tie type of uh, mounting system. Uh, you, you can easily find them from like China for a few bucks, but they, they are very kind to have included it. So these are the uh, mounting, it's a like cable tie where you are supposed to fit this through the cooling fins of the radiator. Uh, but my worry is that this part where it is sitting on the radiator uh, fin itself uh, I think eventually with a lot of uh, vibration because the, the fan motor is vibrating a little bit even if no matter what is vibrating right so the abrasion I, I worry that the abrasion will eventually cut the, the, the radiator so I'm, I will not use this and I will make metal brackets uh, to mount the fan I've got Wong here, he's my fabricator today. <laughs> Metal work fabricator. So we've got a fan shroud and then this is a stock radiator. So now we are making marking to see where we want to mount. Huh? How we want to use this bracket, where, where's the position, how long we need, where, where are we drilling holes. So this is the, the process of it. Okay, this is the bottom of the radiator, this is the top. What I think is that for 16 inch, uh, it's just a tad too big because there will be a, a water hose uh, running through here at the bottom. And you can see that it's probably going to press on the, the hose. So what we plan is on the top here, we're going to grind off a bit of, um, this is a, a, a reservoir hose um, holder. We are going to use a cable tie to hold the cable but grind off here so that we can move the radiator upwards. So we gave our best to trim the top here but overall we are testing with the expansion tank's uh, hose 
return holes here you can see that this holes will be our limit uh, still very small space at the bottom for the fat holes if I were to choose again maybe I will choose a 14 inch fan rather than a 16 inch so the 16 is like pushing it to the limit but 14 would have gave us more room okay so this is our draft marking this is where we are going to drill drill and then use bolt and nut expand it on the radiator so we have this uh, mini fence drill to make the bracket the workshop is becoming like a fabricator machine shop so currently this is how it looks like to be mounted making holes to fit the bracket so on this uh, original fan shroud, at the bottom we just open up a little bit of the plastic to trim it so that it, it clears with the bracket, clicks in, fits like a glove. Okay, now we are doing some test fitting. So of course because uh, the fan is quite close to the water pump pulley, uh, very careful, have to adjust and the uh, shroud have to go in together and that's pretty difficult. We are trying to negotiate in and avoid the pulley and stuff. Okay, it's really a tight fit. See this the electric fan, fan shroud. Of course, I will have to cable tie uh, this part. But you know, I think it, it fits. Lah, yeah? It's very close. There's a small offset between the electric motor and the water pump. Pulley and the fan shroud, but there is some clearance. Fingers crossed, it should be okay. So it's pretty, it's pretty fantastic. You see, it looks like a stock car. You don't even notice anything, but let me put some light. Oh, the fan, that's how it looks. This after the installation. So now I'm going to do some wiring. So what I plan is I still use the. Um, E36 they come with low speed and high speed fan uh, relay I will wire this to the low speed and the auxiliary fan to the high speed but I will only use the low speed function of the auxiliary fan uh, so it will turn on when the coolant temperature is high then both will run together but otherwise only this fan will operate alright so it's the second day now um, and we are going to do the wiring of the new radiator fan so we got the car jacked up we are going to open the cover here and uh, sort out the wiring this is the radiator and the fan from underneath we have passed the wires uh, through the little hole that we, we, we dremel off uh, where the bracket is passing so so happened that we have enough space and it's passing out nicely here and the uh, auxiliary fan this is the original auxiliary electric fan for e36 uh, it has this three uh three terminal pins here uh, and what i will plan to do is i okay this of course uh, is the ground and, and i'm what i did is to strip off a bit of the insulator and what i'll do is i'll do a key tap over here to another connector uh, so that I can also put some terminal for, for this and click it in um, there will be high speed low speed uh, wires uh, do check with your own car which one is the low speed and high speed what I plan to do is that the start fan will activate on low speed okay you start cooling air on low speed and then when the air conditioning is uh, turned on that's when high speed is demanded or when the car is very hot the, the radiator is very hot uh, high speed will turn on the auxiliary fan but i will use the only the low speed terminal for the fan so that it doesn't pull too much current on the stock system right now i'm seated here just beside my car like this because i'm starting to learn that for this cable the auxiliary fan harness at any time either low speed or high speed one of it will carry electricity 
So when it is on high speed, it doesn't mean that both the low and high carries the 12 foot power supply. So which means my initial thought of having the electric, the newly added sun fan to run on low speed and then when the high speed is required, the ox fan turns on as well. It seems that it's not possible. It's either one of it will run or both will run at the same time or you just choose one of the fan like I only want to run say the sun fan then I can just unplug the auxiliary fan okay so that's what I've learned if apparently if you don't have a uh, you're not building a whole new relay system that's the trouble you'll be having right so I have got it running uh, and then now I'm testing using the thermostat switch So both, whichever whether whether the car is commanding for high speed or low speed, they both operate. So the front ox fan works, the rear fan works as well. Uh, there is no high speed, low speed anymore. Uh, apparently, if you want to have uh, different operation at different temperature, then you need to make your own uh, relay or some kind of switch for it. But otherwise, uh, you will run this both at any time. Hey, yeah, so I've been uh, driving the car for about a thousand kilometers. Some of them are highway mileage and some of them are full of hard pumps. So there isn't any issue with the electric fan. So I would say that uh, this conversion to electric fan is a success. Uh, some tips for my friends here. Uh, if you are going to embark onto the electric fan uh, conversion, some of the things that you need to expect to do is the, when you're making the bracket, you're going to have many visits to hardware, uh, bolt and nut shop. So because um, the, the fan, overall the fan is pretty close to the radiator uh, and we wouldn't want it to have any contact with the radiator fins itself. Um, for myself, I made I think four trips to the hardware shop and I've gotten a bunch of different mix of bolts so uh, when the normal hex bolts doesn't work uh, I will go get those allen key bolts where they are thinner so that uh, when we tie down the fan it's going to clear the radiator itself um, secondly what is the other tips that I like to give you is that uh, do prepare electrically whether you want to be using the stock um, uh, relay for the fan which means that you will turn on both your auxiliary fan and the electric fan uh, all at once uh, but if you don't want them to turn on together then be prepared to make your own uh, circuit to turn on those fan independently I hope you enjoy this uh, sharing uh, where you saw my conversion to electric fan and uh, good luck to you guys if you are doing it leave me a comment if you got uh, any questions I'll try to help you and do give me a like and a share if you enjoy this video bye guys